in explaining how the Jews and Christians must feel themselves subdued in accord with the Quran's commands, the great Islamic scholar Ibn Kathir quotes a saying of Muhammad, do not initiate the salam, the greeting of peace, to the Jews and Christians, and if you meet any of them in a road, force them to the narrowest alley. Ibn Kathir then goes on to outline the notorious, and almost certainly legendary, Pact of Umar, which was an agreement made according to Islamic tradition between the Caliph Umar, who ruled the Muslims from 634 to 644 AD, and a Christian community. This pact is worth close examination because despite its very slight historical value, it reflects the basis, the foundation of Islamic law regarding the treatment of the Zummis, Dimmis, that is, the subjugated people under Islamic law. With remarkably little variation throughout Islamic history, wherever and whenever Islamic law has been strictly enforced, this is generally how non-Muslims have been treated. Working from the full text, as Ibn Kathir has it, here are the conditions the Christians accept in return for what it terms safety for ourselves, children, property, and followers of our religion. Conditions that, according to Ibn Kathir, ensured their continued humiliation, degradation, and disgrace in accord with the Quran's command. The Christians agree they will, will not build a monastery, church, or a sanctuary for a monk. They will not restore any place of worship that needs restoration. They will not use such places for the purpose of enmity against Muslims. They will not allow a spy against Muslims into their churches and homes or hide deceit or betrayal against the Muslims. They will not imitate the Muslims' clothing, caps, turbans, sandals, hairstyles, speech, nicknames, and title names. They will not ride on saddles. They will not hang swords on their shoulders. They will not collect weapons of any kind or carry those weapons. They will not encrypt their stamps in Arabic. They will not sell liquor. You may recall Christians in Iraq over the last few years ran afoul of Muslims violently reasserting that rule. They will not teach their children the Quran. They will not publicize practices of shirk, that is, associating partners with Allah in worship, that is, regarding Jesus as the Son of God. In other words, Christians and other non-Muslim, all of their religious practice must be private, if not furtive. Christians agreed not to build crosses on the outside of their churches, demonstrating them, putting their books in public or in Muslim fairways and markets. Again, Christian worship must not be public, where Muslims can see it and become annoyed. Christians agreed not to sound bells in churches except discreetly or raise their voices while reciting their holy books inside their churches in the presence of Muslims, nor raise their voices at funerals or light torches at funeral processions in the fairways of Muslims or their markets. They will not bury their dead next to Muslim dead. That would be unclean. They will not buy servants who are captured by Muslims or invite anyone to shirk. That is, they're not going to bring the gospel to anybody new. Although the Christians also agree not to prevent any of their fellows from embracing Islam if they chose to do so. So the Christians can be the object of proselytizing but must not engage in it themselves. And of course, they must not beat any Muslim. Meanwhile, the Christians will allow Muslims to rest in their churches, whether they come by day or night, open the doors of their houses of worship for the wayfarer and passerby, provide board and food for those Muslims who come as guests for three days, respect Muslims, move from the places they sit in if they choose to sit in them, like shades of the old Jim Crow South, have the front of their hair cut where their customary clothes, wherever they are, wear belts around their waist. These rules are so that a Muslim can recognize that a non-Muslim is coming and doesn't make the mistake of greeting him with assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, which is the Muslim greeting reserved only for a fellow Muslim. The Christians also agree to be guides for Muslims and refrain from breaching their privacy in their homes. So Muslims can come to a Christian home and demand to be put up there for three days, but the Christians, of course, don't dare to go to Muslims' homes. The Christians swore, if we break any of these promises that we set for your benefit against ourselves, then our zumma or dimma, promise of protection, is broken, and you are allowed to do with us what you are allowed to do to people of defiance and rebellion, that is, kill them. These are still the parameters of Islamic law regarding non-Muslims to this day. For more information, go to this website. <laughs>